problem as mine. Kept that was down. hard work, that one. <laughs> These roads microphone. I don't know. What are we going to do with you, uh, <laughs> Clinton? Hey, uh, Matty, um, are you ready? We're into episode number 10. Let's roll, Clouds. You ready to go? Here okay, we well, go. listen, here's the thing, Matty. Have you ever worked with a buyer's agent in your career in real estate? Absolutely. Yeah? Yep. And uh, have you found them working them good? Really good. Um, yeah, very professional. Most of the buyer's agents I've dealt with have been really good. Yeah. Um, our guest here today has been exceptional. Had yeah. a lot, to, lot of dealings with Byron uh, Rose over the years. Yeah. Um, found that uh, his clients are, are always highly organised when they come um, along and have a look at the properties. Perfect. Which is a testimony to um, the way that they, these guys deal with their clients. Yeah. So why don't we give a formal <coughs> welcome and introduction to uh, Byron Rose, buyer's agent here based in Sydney. But uh, Byron, Welcome. Thank you very much for To the mentors. Yeah. Just come in and talk a little bit yeah. closer so our okay. listeners can hear you. <laughs> Thank you. So, Byron, nice. tell us a little bit about your business, how long you've been in uh, being a buyer's agent yeah. and, um, and your background. Okay. So, Rose and Jones uh, was established by Rachel, my wife, 20 years ago. Wow. And uh, the two of us uh, set it up 20 years and been in operation all that time. We've now expanded uh, to a good portion, say we've got 14 people in the office here in Sydney and we've extended our services now into um, Victoria and Queensland. Wow, 20 years. I actually remember when you <laughs> originally first opened, so 20 years ago, Matt, I was at LJ yeah. Hooker Bondi Junction. Oh, there you I go. I just got out of nappies. <laughs> 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 and I got into real estate a couple of years beforehand and I was thinking, buyers agents, what do they actually do? So how can this be relevant today, Byron? Let's talk about... The marketplace at the moment, mate. Yeah. What do you? Let's talk with you, mate. What, what are you seeing in the market? You're, you're you're in the trenches with your yep. guys in your marketplace at the moment. Um, what's happening out there right now? Absolutely. Look, um, I think if uh, any agent that's worth their salt, it's doing their absolute best for their clients. It has yep. to use every opportunity yep. to get maximum buyer exposure um, for all their listings. So yep. the first place to go, you would think, you know, would be buyer's agents obviously always working with people that are qualified. Yep. So in a marketplace where there's a lot of noise at the moment around, you know, it's coming back a bit, the clearance rates have dropped under, you yeah. know, 70%. Correct. Um, well, buyers are becoming like gold again, yeah. you know, so... Yeah. They're not in plentiful supply. So people that have rapport and trust with them, are, are, you know, obviously the agents that are doing their job would have a good buyer's database, mm. but the buyer's agents would obviously, you know, have a loyal clientele. So keeping a, a, a buyer's agent working closely with a buyer's agent is, is an absolutely important thing. We've noticed clouds in the last sort of three months, the market's yep. dipped a bit. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, the clearance rates, obviously some clients are still feeling, you know, they want to hold out for their price, but um, they just don't have the amount of uh, competition on every single listing. Yeah. So having a buyer's agent come along and, and that's already got rapport, that's um, been working and educating a buyer as to where the market is, whether it's going up or down, those buyers are usually highly qualified. So yeah. adding them into the mix for the clients is a really important part of the equation. Yeah, because we, I mean, I'm talking to agents across Australia, Byron, and numbers of buyers coming through open homes are a lot less than they were, like you said, Matty, three, yep. three months ago. So how can an agent um, use you and yeah. you bring value to them? Matty just hit on something really important and uh, as I was saying before, Rachel and I have been in this business now or industry for 20 years and the importance of relationships uh, is vital now. As the market ta takes a dip, so um, true. the relationships that we have puts us in the forefront for our clients to get exposure to real estate that otherwise a lot of the general public will not get access to. Yeah. And as we were talking about before, um, the off-market market is becoming a bigger marketplace. Yes. Um, and so, therefore, those relationships are going to be vital going through this next phase. And, you know, all our clients typically want to get access to 100% of the market. And to do so, the buyer's agent needs to have those relationships in place. If you don't, you're not doing a service for your client. Mm. So, Byron, is it fair to say um, a lot of your clients may be high profile and they don't want to walk through an open um, home and necessarily be exposed to bidding at an auction? And the, Look, over the that, years... Does that happen? Yeah, it has happened. Mm. Uh, I don't believe that that is now primarily the, um, the opportunity. That shifted? Th that, that has shifted. That's primarily used to be the angle for a mm. buyer's agent, not so more anymore. Um, and going forward, as I said before, the relationships are going to be vital in this marketplace. And if you don't nurture those relationships with the selling agents, 
you're not going to get access. I guess too, a lot of your clients come to you because of lack of time. Correct. You, you can go oh. and just look at everything and then shortlist. That's really what your role is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So um, taking the brief, getting out into the market, uh, shortlisting, mm. and then shortlisting that down to maybe two or three properties that we will go and chase. And that, as I said before, to getting access to yep. the total market, not just one or two. Yep. So what would what would a, a typical agent do, Byron, to start a relationship with, say, someone in your business, in your company, being a buyer's agent? Um, what would what would a typical real estate agent do to start to reach out to you and sort of say, hey, you know, oh. um, I want to work with you more closely. Yeah. Um, you know, be as build a strategic alliance with you. What would what would be the process? Oh, let me flip it around the other way. What I actually tell my guys to do, yeah, so, which would be no different to uh, the selling agents uh, angle as well, and that is, um, you can't be liked or have a relationship with 100% of people. It's impossible. Mm. So when you go through your opens, who do you, who, what are the agents that are reflecting information that is important to you and your client? And from there, I, I believe, starts the, the, the beginning of a nice relationship. Those agents who communicate well with the buyer's agent and therefore once the buyer's agent has that start of that relationship, I tell my guys, make sure you keep nurturing it. They are the ones who get the access to the product that we want to purchase. Mm, mm. So if you don't build that relationship with that person who specialises in that, that particular area, yep. you're not going to get it. Wow, wow. And therefore, you haven't done the service by your client because the relationship is the Got important it. cog in the wheel. Yeah, right, right. Byron, is it, um, I'm intrigued because I remember when you started, I've known you for <laughs> as long as that time, but, and Rachel, um, she's a champion. Um, How's the role of the buyer's agent changed in the last 20 years? H- has it changed? Um, good question. When, when we first started, it felt like that uh, Rachel and I were really just a concierge service. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just giving access to real estate and going inspecting properties and telling people this mm. is what it's worth and blah, blah, blah. But now um, Rachel and I and the team, we've developed more significant processes in, in what we in our due diligence so that we know what we're doing, we know how to analyse the real estate, we know what the rates per square metre are for each type of property, whether it be a home, an apartment or a vacant block of land. So the skill set, um, in my view, has shifted in that the buyer's agent needs to understand how to assess value, not just print a document off RP data and say that is the price. Mm. I think you need okay. to go the extra step and analyse that information because the the algorithms that are in there are so wide and varied and we do work in a very small pocket of the Sydney market or a particular geography of various markets. You can't have such a wide, wide-angled lens on, on property. Right. Yeah. And um, I, I've sort of noticed, I could be wrong... Um, ancillary services around what yeah. you do have grown to from 20 years ago. Is that right? Yeah, yep. to a degree. I mean, obviously, similarly to what you guys do, uh, you know, we do offer the services of legal advice. Mm. We do the strata searches and the building and pest reports. Um, Finance. Uh, yeah, we mm. get, obviously, yeah. Mm. And that's a big angle for us mm. as well in, in respect to relationships. Again, um, those who specialise in the finance market, they've got... Um, a boatload of clients who are yeah. missing out on real estate. Yep. Now, what about Byron? If, if there's someone listening here, they might think, okay, well, do buyer agents just work in the metro areas, like in, mm. say, the eastern suburbs of Sydney, lower North Shore or wherever else? Like, say, if there's a listener here today that could be, I don't know, just say out in Liverpool, out in the western parts of Sydney, um, is a buyer agent as relevant out there as, say, someone in, you know, looking to buy in the eastern suburbs of Sydney? Like, do you have clients who are looking not just in those areas? Or? Yeah, yeah. Look, there's certainly a high turnover of um, clientele in the western suburbs. Um, not that we specialise in that area, but I know that there is certainly an opportunity for a buyer's agency role in those markets. Right, yep. Um, so for anyone listening out there, there's, there's an opportunity for, for that particular marketplace. Primarily, buyer's agencies were set up to service the core markets of each capital, capital city of the states. Yep. And that, um, I liken it, go back 20 years ago, we were, an inf- we were a baby in the industry. Yep. We are still in the cotton wriggling yep. around. Now we're in now, I don't think, we're just on the, we're outside the toddler years and we're coming into the teenage years yep. as an industry. And as 
more competition comes into the industry, I think that's a great thing and it puts a stamp on uh, that, that, that angle of the real estate market. That service that needs yeah, to be provided. Yeah, absolutely. What about um, advocates? Is that is that the same? Is like yeah. I notice in Melbourne they call themselves advocates. Is that's, that just a, that's Melbourne. <laughs> that's just an upper class be way nice, of saying be nice. it. <laughs> um, so in Melbourne it seems to be that it's very. It's a really popular yeah. service. Is that correct? Yeah. So when uh, Rachel and I started uh, back with all those years ago, Melbourne was already ahead of the Sydney right. uh, market in respect to uh, buyers agency. So I would have to say the last count of buyers agents or agencies in Sydney versus Melbourne, Sydney's now overtaken Melbourne. Right. Is that right? Okay. Absolutely. That's huge. That's a big. That's a big one. Yeah. Fantastic. But okay. the role, advocacy, buyer's agent, identical. It's identical. Correct. Okay. Correct. And no what changes. about nationally rest, like Perth, Gold Coast, Brisbane, Canberra? Yeah. What's the th- spread off the top of your head there? So as to numbers, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth. Okay. I think there's one or two buyer's agents in the ACT and right. South Australia. Okay. So, so there's it, representation. Is it is trickling? Yeah, 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 absolutely. You can see it. Absolutely. And it's going to grow. It will okay. continue to grow. And For I mean, sure. as an industry um, that is significantly behind in years to the selling um, process. Um, I think we're on a real steep, steep learning curve and a, and a growth curve for the next 15, 20 years. Okay. So, Byron, looking at your – so, obviously, we understand from the vendor's point of view mm. – uh, sorry, from the purchaser's point of view, they, they pick you, you look after everything from one-stop shop. How do – how did, to get into the agent's mindset and psyche um, – understanding that you're not competition to the actual agents in a sense that you can actually i mean i've worked with you for years yeah. um off and on you know i've had clients that you've you've had um purchases on etc um i think it's painless to have buyers agents working <laughs> with agents but that's just my personal view how do you feel you're received in the market one and two what is the general feel that you get when you turn up to act on behalf of a purchaser very, very good question. Mm. So go back 20 years ago again mm. and we were like vermin. Okay. <laughs> agents, you know, yeah, your, yeah. Your, your hardcore traditional selling agents didn't understand. They they saw us as a threat. Yes. And as the years roll it's on... my listing. Don't touch yeah, it. Exactly. <laughs> but they thought we were going to chop them out of a deal and yeah. it wasn't the case yeah. at all. We were there to facilitate a transaction. Mm. And going forward, roll forward another 15 years, um, with the industry growing the way it has... And the amount of buyers agents now involved in the property property piece, listing agents now see the benefit of engaging with with buyers Absolutely. agents. Absolutely, there yeah. is, and those that don't see it haven't grown enough. They don't understand the mechanisms that we bring into the transaction. Yeah, and those who have embraced it um, are seeing the rewards of engaging with buyers agents. I'm not to say that you know buyers agents are there, you know, an easy free ride for selling agents to get deals done. And uh, sometimes I've been accused of being too hard to deal with. But, um, you know, that's the process. And but you, you know, represent the buyer. Yeah, the the day, we represent the buyer. Clouds, there's also, um, you know, you having worked in real estate as well, same, you, you and I um, for a long time together. Yeah. But um, one thing, the, the myth that's out there, Byron, um, and I don't know if you feel the same, Clouds, was that a buyer's agent's always trying to get the house cheaper or the the apartment cheaper. That's actually not your brief from the client, is it? And it's not what you promise them to do either. Because market value is market value. Market value, value, correct. But but what about today? What about today, Byron, where the market is This is where we want to go. Yeah, exactly. Like you've got got sellers up here and you've got buyers who are thinking down here. A buyer comes to you and probably goes, hey, Byron, how can we get it like a dirt cheap? How do we get the bargains now? So... How do you work on that? Like How do you manage your expectations? Yeah. First thing is, there is never a bargain in, in the prime markets of any any, yeah. f- any city around the world. I'd have to world. agree with you there. There yeah. is no bargains. Yeah. And if you do, you're, you're, you're done very, very well. well. Yeah. But yeah. they do not come across the desk every day. Um, so how do... <laughs> How do you manage that with the clients? Um, we, t- as I said, no bargains. We educate our clients through the process of the search. So once they've engaged with us, yep. we go through the search and we're educating them with everything that we inspect. We're showing them the differences 
And once we start to hone in on something, yes. whether it be one, two, three or four properties that we have a significant interest in, we start, as I said, we bring uh, RP data into the equation, but then we segment that information mm. into a very simple spreadsheet. Uh, it's not rocket science. We're not putting man on the moon mm. here. It's just a really simple calculation. Yes, yeah. comparables. And comparables, yeah. and we break it down and making sure that they are comparable. And so not do, do they initially expect when they come to see you that you're going to get it cheaper for them? Has that ever there, come up? Oh, yeah. We've, there's mm. always been that uh, expectation. Mm. But over the last, I'd say, the last 10 years, it's actually getting access to real estate. Right, okay. It's not about so trying... On, yeah. You know, professional. And, and that's where that, the, that is actually an expectation that we're going to negotiate a better outcome than they can mm. do themselves anyway. Mm, yeah. So that's already off the table. Right, which is probably true too, Correct. yeah. And yeah. that's why the off-market opportunity yeah. really plays yeah. really well for these agents. Absolutely, yeah. Where you can bring the buyer and do an off-market. And in the absence market. of competition, a buyer's agent should be able to provide a level of comfort as well to their client. Because, you know, when you uh, inspect a property that is off-market, you're the only person on it fear creeps into their decision making to say okay well if it's off market i'm the only one maybe there's something wrong with it and that's yeah. where a vop buyer's agent really should come to the fore and explain how where the value of that property sits in the current climate yep yeah and having a third party who's on their um, side one of the um successful things that claudio and clinton have created with the mentors is mm. um this is just live as is so there's um, <laughs> we, we, we could ask you anything here right yeah. so, we, we, we like to freestyle <laughs> you can notice byron we just freestyle i'm going to ask you a controversial one <laughs> yeah, so on. you can't really back out now because you got the one <laughs> um we're live on facebook are we, <laughs> this will this will help this will help the industry and that's what i'm all about about too is like yeah. helping obviously our in, in team here as well as helping the whole industry when I ask questions. Tell me, um, what's do you see a big difference in the caliber of agents you deal with? Like in you you go in to negotiate, mm -hmm. there's there must be and, and I'm saying this because you know one of the big industry issues is agents trying to defend their fees and their I see a huge difference this is just my personally but I'd rather hear from you. Um, you must notice the difference between dealing with Agent X, Agent Y and Agent Z um, around the ability for them to maximise the outcome. Do yep. you, can you give us a bit of a... Because you've you're, so, you're, you're got an unfair advantage, what we <laughs> don't, is you, you know all the agents. That's so right. you get to see who's mm -hmm. a good negotiator, who's not. How, how much difference to the vendor is a gun agent worth in the end result? Oh, tremendous amount of right. value. Tremendous. You, you can so actually the fee, articulate fee. it. The one, two, two and a half percent fees that uh, agents charge, that's off the table in respect to a good agent. That The preservation of fees should not ever be a discussion. It's about how they're going to maximise the value for, for their client. And through their negotiations, that two percent is, it's, it's nothing. It's just uh, that spare change mm. at the end of the day so because they can maximise another five or seven percent in the in the transaction. That's if awesome. really good. So what I was but, trying to get to, sorry to jump back in yeah. there, but what I was trying to get to was, if you're a top agent and you know you're a top negotiator, you should hold your fee because you, yeah. you can see – can you see – you've seen the difference between – Because you're dealing with agents, every agents day. all the time. Uh, can yeah. you give and, us and some – And they're giving so you an offer and you're going, oh, my God, I had another 50 grand up my sleeve. I could have put him – and this guy's accepted the offer where basically – Correct. You, that's where I was going. going. Man, this right guy's on. a good negotiator. Like – that's what Matt's saying is you can see so different it, the, types of agents. To go back to what you were saying before, the, have I seen a change in the calibre of agents out there? And skill. Through, and skill, skill sets. Mm. And um, I would definitely say in the last five years I've seen um, with the growth of, uh, of selling agents into the market because the market drew a lot of people into the industry, mm. yes. the calibre in my view has waned uh, somewhat. But I think going forward, you'll see those with very good negotiation skills and, and, and general skill sets will remain in the industry and they'll, they'll stay there and, and throughout the transaction. And you know who they, they are, right? Correct. Because you're dealing with them. You know, yeah. um, one of our colleagues in, in Rose and Jones, you know, we've sat down and, and gone through the agents that we deal with on a regular basis and we categorise them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is and, that on? Oh, no. No. Do and we the, need to ask on what... How what, do we get that list? <laughs> <laughs> do we need to ask on what rating you're rating them on? <laughs> yeah, like Apple you iTunes, can, no, no, four no, no, and a half. And five, pure, we've got five star reviews, by the way. <laughs> the, rating, the rating that we, we apply is based on their skills and the type of person they are in the process. Really? So okay. we can be armed on how we're going to transact with that agent. Right, yep. So are they 
are they non-commutative? Are they aggressive? Are they, um, you know, we know from history, you know, a, an agent, no names, but, you know, won't communicate with you for 48 hours and then all of a sudden it ramps up on right. you. So we understand the mindsets of a lot of our agents yeah. that we deal with so that it helps us how to navigate the pathway to get a successful outcome for our client. That's awesome. Would yeah. you be able to share with the listeners what you'd find the best agents, what their course, what their best skills are when you're trying to... Could you share that? Number one, doing? communication. Right. If you do not communicate, no one knows where they stand. Yeah, it's and a big one, isn't it? It's yeah. just... That's fundamental, number one. Number two... Are you allowed to swear? Or swear? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Clinton, <laughs> Clinton, put the... Get your hand on the get, red get button. The, the, the edit. <laughs> Depends on what level, Byron. Go, <laughs> no, Byron. It's a family show. <laughs> Mums and dads out there, yeah. cover the ears. Go no, don't bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just yeah. don't bullshit. Just yeah. put it all, all on the table. When you put everything on the table, the deals get done. Totally. We're not there to... Yeah. We're not there to... Just tell the frigging truth. Tell mm. the truth. Mm. That's it. Communicate. Simple. We're not there to muck around and buggerise around a transaction. We're actually there to facilitate an outcome for, yep. bu- for our client and so is the selling agent. So yeah. communication follow-up, straight talking, straight shooting. Yep. Um, what about product knowledge? Do you find there's a difference in agents? Some agents know all about the product, the other sales in the area, yeah. and they know about their properties better than other agents? Do you, there, there, you are, there is certainly a handful of agents who re- are really, really, really good at product knowledge and they know not just their own transactions but all their competitors' transactions in the market. And that helps build a, a case study when they're trying to transact on the product that they've got on at the market at that time. See, Clouds, yeah. I'd, I'd be saying this is great to have Byron here to talk about this because he's an independent health awesome. check on the industry. Yes. But where I was going with if we're coaching agents, and I know yeah. you've got a huge coaching database, yeah, yeah. but um, we'd be saying to them, like taking what Byron's saying as gold, yes. if we've spoken to a buyer's agent, it's all about communication because if you're selling yourself to the owner if you had an endorsement from a buyer's agent as to look i tick these boxes correct that's why you have to hire me and i'm worth the commission Mm. because the buyer's agents can tell us there's a huge variance to somebody getting the maximum result it's a a two-way street it's it's a two-way street as well Mm. because i know there are a number of buyer's agents and agencies out there that don't communicate very well. Yep, totally. So it's and that frustrates yeah. the selling agent. Two They're street. probably not Absolutely. communicating to their vendor either, Byron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, look, Byron, it's been an absolute honour for you to come in and join us here really in the studio at HQ, the mentors. The mentors. And uh, if people want to reach out to you, where's the best place to find you? Uh, Rosenjones.com.au. Oh, okay. I love the best it. Way. Yeah. Got something great from this episode? It would mean the world to us if you passed it on. Tune in each week as we mentor a new agent. Have a question? Want to be on the show? Get in touch with Claudio Encina, Matt LaHood, or visit our Facebook page. The Mentors is brought to you by Sprinkler.media.